Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of the University of South Florida into the sirtuins and in particular sirtuin 1 and sirtuin 3 has returned some promising results with regard to people who suffer from acute heart attacks. Well that's enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study out of the University of South Florida has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Anne Delito Bayer of the University of South Florida, which shows that in a study that was published in Age and Cell, so 2 in 1 and so 2 in 3 levels actually decline in aging hearts. And there are links in the description below to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Let's quickly look at what sirtuins actually are. Sirtuins are a family of anti-aging proteins that help regulate cellular lifespan, metabolism and resistance to stress. The potential protective effect of sirtuins in age-related diseases, including cardiovascular disease, remains an area of intense investigation with many labs worldwide spending enormous amounts of time and money on groundbreaking research. In a new preclinical study led by the University of South Florida, researchers have determined that sirtuin 1 and sirtuin 3 levels decline in aging hearts, disrupting the ability of cardiac muscles to contract in response to reperfusion injury. Furthermore, age related sirt 1 and sirt 3 deficiency can impair cardiac function by altering mitochondrial dynamics. The researchers report that the mitochondria play a vital role in metabolic health and inflammatory response. The principal investigator, Dr. G. Lee, PhD, a professor of surgery at the University of South Florida said, we discovered that age-related changes in mitochondrial dynamics are caused by SIRT1, SIRT3 deficiency, specifically in the cardiomyocytes. You need a strong presence of SIRT1 and SIRT3 to keep mitochondrial dynamics healthy in the heart. Otherwise, the heart's pumping function will become weak. Our mitochondria produce the energy needed to drive nearly all the processes in our living cells. Cardiac muscles contain more mitochondria than any other cells in our body. This is because the heart needs large amounts of energy to constantly pump blood throughout the body. Stable mitochondrial dynamics maintain a healthy balance between the constant division called fission and the merging called fusion of mitochondria and helps ensure the quality of these specialized structures more commonly known as the powerhouse of the cell. Reperfusion therapy is a common treatment that includes drugs and surgery. It is performed following an acute heart attack. It restores blood flow and therefore oxygen to the region of the heart damaged by the heart attack. Unfortunately, in some patients, this necessary procedure triggers further injury to the heart muscle tissue surrounding the initial heart attack site. Regrettably, no effective therapies currently exist to prevent reperfusion injury. To help analyze the response of cardiac mitochondria to reperfusion stress, the researchers deleted SIRT1 or SIRT3 in the cardiac muscle cells of mouse hearts and then examined the mitochondrial response to stress caused by restricted blood flow. The researchers found that the mitochondria in mouse hearts lacking SIRT3 were more vulnerable to reperfusion stress than the mouse hearts with their SIRT3 still intact. Let's look at some of the results. The cardiac mitochondrial dynamics, including shape, size, and structure of the mitochondria in these knockout mice, physiologically resemble that of aged normal mice retaining their cardiac SIRT3. Furthermore, the young mice with SIRT1 or SIRT3 removed had measurably weaker cardiomyocyte contractions and exhibited aging-like heart dysfunction when reperfusion stress was introduced. In essence, without SIRT1 or SIRT3, the hearts of these otherwise healthy young mice looked and behaved like older hearts. 
Dr. G. Lee said, We started this study trying to understand why older people have higher incidences of heart attacks than younger people and why they die more often, even if they receive maximum treatment. Younger people are much more likely to recover from heart attacks and less likely to suffer from reperfusion injury. Our research suggests that one reason could be that both CERT1 and CERT3 are downregulated with aging. Younger people have higher levels of these proteins needed to make mitochondrial dynamics healthier. Dr. Lee went on to say, the study also suggests that before surgically opening blocked coronary arteries to restore blood flow in older patients, administering a treatment to rescue their diminished CERT1, CERT3 levels may increase tolerance to cardiac muscle reperfusion stress, thereby reducing heart attack complications and deaths. So, are CERT1, CERT3 activators a possibility for humans? If their mouse model findings do translate to human hearts, Dr. Lee's team wants to work with companies who are interested in developing and testing CERT1 and CERT3 activators in an attempt to mitigate heart attack related reperfusion injury in humans. Dr. Lee closed by saying, our ultimate goal is to identify ideal targets for the treatment of heart attack, especially in older patients. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both, I think a very interesting study. And if these findings can be translated into humans, I'm hoping that the race to find a CERT1 and a CERT3 activator will quickly be on. And also another study to show that the sirtuins really are the longevity genes and definitely worthy of more research, more effort and more time being put into them. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.